Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. My guest today is David Leno, head of Adobe's product security incident response team. David, I want, I, the, the issue of targeted attacks is in the news a lot these days, and of course Adobe's name gets called because uh, vulnerabilities in Reader, Adobe Reader, and Adobe Flash in many cases are, are being used. Just talk to me a little bit about what goes on in, in, in your world when these things happen. Let's say a uh, high profile victim is targeted, uh, gets compromised, uh, the report comes into you. Give me a walkthrough of what happens next. Sure. So uh, our team, um, my team focuses on the response side, but I roll up to a team that actually focuses on security as a whole. So we have a proactive team that uh, focuses on doing things like threat modeling, fuzzing, and uh, code analysis, making sure our, our products are secure and that before they're all released. That's right. Right. So uh, if in the event of a vulnerability or an exploit in the wild being reported, um, our, our product teams plug into our PSER process, which basically involves um, getting uh, analysis of the issue, getting it fixed, getting the fix tested, and rolling the fix out as quickly as possible. Uh, at the same time, we're sharing information on the underlying vulnerability with partners who can uh, detect the vulnerability in the wild before it gets to, uh, gets to customers um, you know, in the interim where we don't have the fix available. Uh, what prompts, uh, how, how, what goes into the decision making to go uh, out of band and emergency release versus waiting for whenever you've had it scheduled? Right, yeah, it's something that we take uh, very seriously and, and you know, put a lot of consideration into uh, because there is a cost to distributing updates. Um, at the same time, we want to make sure our customers are as secure as possible. So, uh, in large part, if there's an exploit in the wild, We'll either um, plug it into an upcoming update if it's if it's in the near term, uh, if there's an update scheduled within the next couple of weeks. Otherwise, we will um, roll our process and, and put out a out of band release, um, which you know generally we uh, we try to get it in, out within uh, you know a week or two. And and we've had pretty good success uh, releasing uh, the last two flash player issues within a, a few days. A few days. Uh, you're also getting a lot of vulnerability reports from regular bug finders and vulnerability finders who you know, pro plug into different processes, whether it's going through one of the, uh, the, the bounty programs or whether it's coming directly to you. You're getting a lot of those. What percentage of, of vulnerabilities and these zero-day issues you're tackling would you say comes from actual live attacks? Right. Is so it's very, it, very minute, small? It's, it's it? a very small percentage, you know, a couple of percentage points. Um, the vast majority that we get are uh, disclosed to us directly um, by researchers, um, by partners, by uh, customers. Uh, and we really appreciate all the work that researchers do, um, as well as you know, customers um, and partners as well. Um, it really helps a lot. More eyes on the product helps, uh, helps right. our customers, basically. You mentioned information sharing being an, an important part of your incident response sure. release process. Talk a little bit about uh, what MAP has meant to you, the Microsoft Acti Active Pro uh, Protections Program. Right. Yeah, what that so, is and how useful that's been for you in terms absolutely. of getting. Yeah, so um, Adobe participates in the Microsoft Active Protections Program. Um, MAP, otherwise known as MAP. Um, so MAP has been in place for a, a few years. Um, Adobe started participating in the fall of last year. Uh, we're the first third party who's joined um, on the vulnerability uh, sharing side, right. so information coming from us. Um, it, we channel that through the MAP. Um, uh, channels to get to uh, get to partners who uh, develop antivirus protections, um, uh, intrusion IDS, prevention. IDS, IDS, exactly. Right. Yeah. So, um, so what these, kind of information are you pushing out to them? Yeah. So uh, it's uh, it's it comes in a variety of forms. Um, for uh, you know most responsible disclosures, um, what we'll do is uh, we'll include information on the vulnerability and and um, how it might be detected in a file format. So sometimes, uh, or oftentimes, there's a way to easily uh, look for you know certain um, part of the stream within right. the product uh, file format um, and detect that way. Uh, in the event of a an exploit in the wild, we'll um, give specific information about the exploit. So that'll help um, block the exploit, um, the specific exploit or, or variants of the exploit. Right. So that helps signature creation on, on the back end. The kind of technical information that helps that signature creation. In addition to that, uh, uh, your security religion includes uh, technological advancements in the form of exploit mitigation, sandboxing. Talk a little bit about what the sandbox is, what the concept was, you know, how you went around building it, 
and maybe you know the sample size might be small but do you have any data to share that it's starting to make a difference absolutely sure yeah so um, protected mode in Adobe Reader was introduced in October of last year um, and it was a, a big effort we got help um, from a variety of sources um, we brought in third parties to help us test it mm -hmm. um, we got help from uh, Microsoft in the form of the office team and from Google uh, the Chrome team uh, the technologies that they uh, implemented in Office 2010 and Google Chrome respectively um, so they were a real help in uh, developing protected mode for for reader um, so it's it's another uh, it's, so it's design based on how you borrowed some design that's right. components from that's the right okay. exactly yeah and uh, it's it's another layer of defense um, basically uh, that um, that can be applied for reader uh, we just extended it to Acrobat as well in uh, just this past Tuesday. Um, so, uh, so basically, yeah, another layer of defense. Um, you know, we do things like opt in to DAP and ASLR. Um, we uh, we basically um, do as much as we can to to make sure that the product is secure. Um, the sandboxing um, or protected mode is uh, is just another example of that. And um, you know, we don't see it as a silver bullet, but. Um, it's something that uh, that's definitely helped, as you say, a small sample size, right. but we haven't seen any uh, exploitation that bypasses the sandbox to this point. To this point, uh, or do you have any plans to do any sort of isolation in Flash? And so Shockwave actually, we have uh, we have sandboxing um, for Flash Player in Google Chrome already. Right, right. Um, so that and that piggybacks on their sandboxing exactly. component, right? Right, um, and we also have uh, so Flash Player in Internet Explorer. It's a seven and a plugs into their pro protected mode. Right? Exactly, protected mode. Yeah, um, but for, for other users like me on Firefox, for instance. Um, yeah, so uh, you know, it's it's an evolving process, and, and we're looking at at all our options basically. Thank you very much, David. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you for watching another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. You can check out some other webcasts at youtube.com/kaspersky.